we are live. Welcome to 2022's Moon Knight Review miniseries or Season 1 review for a show. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. And since I'm currently dealing with some back pain, but I still have a lot to say about the shows that I watch, I'm going to speak faster. And so this video is a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up this thing so you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower this. That means there will be no, yeah, no spoilers. And I am not going to be spoiling any other MCU stuff, which is unusual for me for one of these. So if this is the first of these videos by me that you watch, then just to get you up to speed, I love every MCU movie. They're all in the 7 out of 10 to 10 out of 10 range, although I don't make any excuses for Iron Man 2. And I love every, every episode that's come out so far of the Disney Plus MCU shows. Perfect 10 out of 10 for WandaVision, Captain America the Winter Soldier, Season 1 of Loki, Season 1 of What If, Hawkeye, and once again, whether this is just Season 1 or this is the full series, every episode that has aired when I record this video. And yeah, to help you get an idea of whether or not you're going to find my, what I say particularly valuable, I am going to briefly rank all of the MCU shows, except for this one, I will add this one to the ranking at the very end of this video. But yeah, here, ranked worst to best, keeping in mind that I love all of these, Loki, What If, Hawkeye, The Falcon, The Winter Soldier, and WandaVision. This video is not going to contain any clips of any kind. The most visual it gets is when I sometimes act something out, so feel free to watch something visual, like clips from the show, in another tab. I won't mind. So, the plot. Like I said, I'm not spoiling anything, so all I will say is British museum worker Stephen Grant starts experiencing increasingly weird things. Now, you don't need to have watched anything else before watching this, and I'm glad that that's the case, and I think this has the potential to bring in new viewers into the MCU. You really can go directly into this. You don't need to know anything about the rest of the MCU. So, like, if Moon Knight is a character that you care about, and the MCU up to this, and you just avoided the MCU up to this point for, you know, it, your reasons, yeah, I would say, you know, this is a, a perfectly good place to start. And I would say you can, I haven't tried binging the show myself. I watched each episode once. But I, it, it, when, you know, like a day or two after it came out first. But I think you could probably binge this. I think it would be fun to binge. So this was written by Doug Menk and Jeremy Slater. And yeah, the, the, Let's see, the, oh, F, right, Doug Mink is the creator. The, the, yeah, and he has, you know, a history with comic book, yeah. The writing isn't completely perfect, I will grant keeping this vague so that there are no spoilers. There are some things that the show will bring up in writing that don't get a completely satisfying resolution even by the end of the show, but largely it is quite strong. Each person, each, uh, each character has a personality, that's what I was trying to say, and every every character has strong character moments, the concepts are interesting, and while some of the time a, a concept will be brought up where at first you don't really know exactly what's going on, by the end of the show, I would argue it has largely explained things to... I, I was personally satisfied, at least. Your mileage may vary. 
The pilot episode is excellent. It's, you know, I've seen some say that it's probably the best episode of the show. Yeah, overall, it probably is. I don't think that it's like a steep drop, but it definitely is a, a yeah. And the finale, I mean, to not oversell it, I, I loved it, but it definitely does have some issues. I, I can't really get into them without spoiling anything. I'm, I'm going to talk about my issues with it in my thoughts video for the finale. So, But I will say, I overall, I do think it's really great. Now... Right, as an adaptation, some people have felt that it was that it isn't a particularly good adaptation. I understand where they're coming from. I do disagree, though. I think that it takes, it understands what is important about the character, and it deals with the different aspects of the character in a way that makes sense even though not everything, you know, they've definitely changed some things. And this was directed by Justin Benson, Mohamed Diab, Aaron Moorhead, and yeah, the, the, when I looked, all three of them were listed as directing all six episodes. I, I guess it's possible that they Directed different parts of the episode. I, I don't know exactly, but for sure, you know, Muhammad Diab is, uh, ah, crap. I want to say Egyptian. I'm going to really, really quickly look it up so I don't put my foot all the way in my mouth. So, Muhammad Diab is Egyptian, yes, and he brings that to the show. He brings his personal experiences, his I, his cultural identity to the show, and it really, like, I'm really glad we're getting some diversity in the MCU, because boy has it been white dude from America heavy. With the occasional, like, alien who's a white dude from, at, at the very least, the West, and who speaks English as their first language, you know. Yeah, finally we have a little bit more diversity, and yeah, v very appreciated. The, the direction also is not perfect. That There are definitely times where the, the show is in too much of a rush. It's, it's just rushing through things that it would be really compelling if they spent a little more time on. It brings up some incredibly interesting ideas, and not all of them are completely explored to, yeah, it, it could be better. And it's also, yeah, it's, it's different from what we're used to from the MCU. And it's definitely a more, eh, is that technically a spoiler? Yeah, um, okay, moving on. Characters. Oscar Isaac plays Stephen Grant, and he has this, like, I've, I've seen Oscar Isaac in other roles, and he has this swagger to him, you know, Star Wars swagger, very much, yeah, and, yeah, as Stephen Grant, he has, like, he's very put upon, he's, he's very, like, kind of letting other people push him around, and, yeah. I'm not going to get into exactly how, but I will just say he and other actors in this really have to act in some situations that you really, they, they really get put through the ringer. They really have to bring their A game, and they do, and it's amazing to see. And May Kalamawi, you know, the... the To not give anything away, I will just say that she has a connection to another major character. And yeah, she's legitimately interesting. You know, she's... 
difficult to completely avoid spoilers. I'm just going to say she gives an excellent performance. I absolutely loved her, her character. And Ethan Hawke appears, and it's a different role than we're used to seeing him play. And I thought he did an incredible job. And... Yeah, Oscar Isaac, you know, there's what from watching interviews, I learned that Oscar Isaac, he was coming off Star Wars, he did not want to do something big, he wanted to do a character study. And, you know, the, that was how they convinced him to do this. They told him this isn't, this is a character study, it's not this, this big budget noise filled thing, it is a character study. And yeah, I would, I would have to agree, I completely understand why he felt you know, why he was attracted to this project, and I think he did an incredible job. And I think that brings us very nicely into the cinematography. Now, this was handled by DP Darren Moran, and I... That is also definitely a, a place where, like, as other people have pointed out, the lighting is too bright. I, I don't know what they were. I, I don't know. I, I, they, I do think they made a mistake there. I just don't think it's a huge deal. And the, the cinematography in general can be kind of just, it's okay, but it's not like, wow, this is just incredible looking, which... I mean, at this point in the MCU, I think we shouldn't have to settle anymore. Because, yeah, some some of them, some of the early ones, it was like, it's, it's fine, it's fine. But more recently, I mean, Shang-Chi and... Ah, crap. What's the... It's right at the tip of my tongue. What was the... Well, okay, even if I can't recall... I hear that I'm, I'm watching Doctor Strange the day after tomorrow, Doctor Strange 2 at the day after tomorrow, and I hear that one has amazing cinematography, so I, at this point, we really shouldn't have to settle. The editing is also at times a little bit too, in too much of a rush, too, too quick cutting. The special effects are largely good. But I, I saw someone say that he believes the show, the, the it, yeah, it, it was rushed. You know, they, they didn't, the, the special effects people didn't have as much time as they would have liked. And yeah, there definitely, there's some uncanny valley going on. And yeah, again, at the end of the day, it doesn't really bother me that much because where it really needs to be good, it usually is good. There's some excellent stunt work in this, and the locations are quite, yeah, without spoiling, I'll just say that they, they are very, they're compelling to see. And, Yeah, you know, locations, sets, set design, really, really compelling stuff. The action is quite good. And the, the score is pretty good. So, yeah, I... Let's see... Yeah, so I would say the, the best element is how different it is from the rest of the MCU. The worst aspect is probably that at this point they really... we should be able to expect at least a tiny bit better of overall. You know, there... I, yeah, I've talked about the different areas where it could be better. Uh, I saw other people say that they thought it was boring, and some people didn't like how different it was from the MCU, so, yeah, to each their own. Some people are gonna feel that way. I completely disagree. I really feel like, we're, you know, we are, what, 28 movies deep? 
we gotta get some variety. We gotta be don't don't just do the same thing over and over. This is I love it, but I would I would stop loving it if we just kept getting the exact same thing. Now, I was probably most worried that it would be indelicate with the... It brings up some sensitive subjects. I personally thought they did a really great job, but, you know, I ultimately, I... It's, it's possible that, that some... I know some people who were more directly affected by some of the sensitive subjects that the show brings up. Some of them felt that it was a little in insensitive at times. I was most looking forward to a yeah something that was different from the rest of the MCU, and I was very happy with it. The trailers do give away too much. Honestly, if you have if you're watching this review and you're considering watching the show and you haven't yet ah. Uh, you haven't yet watched any trailers, you haven't read any synopsis or anything, I would recommend that you just don't, that you that you stick with that. Now, let's see, the... that brings... Uh, right, and the right now cover poster kind of stuff does not give too much away. The movie does have... the show does have metaphors and stuff that you have to like analyze you know th this is the kind of thing this is not you don't put this on in the background you know don't don't yeah resisting the urge to make a corny reference yeah successfully repressed the urge the the it is something you need to pay very close attention to and honestly maybe watch something here on YouTube that explains some of the things, you know. Now, the that brings us to the ratings by critics. So, I forgot to put the links in here, but it's okay because I'm on the computer. Yes, so right now it has an 87% tomato meter score and a 93% audience score and let's see where did I this is where you go yeah I this is not where okay I guess it doesn't here we go yeah season one has an 87% so it's certified fresh on the Rotten Tomatoes on the tomato meter and of the 206 overall ratings, only 26 of them are rotten. And the 93% audience score is based on 4,651 ratings. And that brings us to Metacritic, which... And we go. On Metacritic, it has a 69, nice, out of 100 critic score and the oh that's right there's no 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 wait no there's got to be a user score and the user score uh hmm uh okay i'm going to have to yeah i will be quick about looking it up because i did not copy it in properly but looking it up, it is 6.9 based on 107 ratings. And the critic score, I'm I, not sure if I said that before, is based on 27 critic reviews. And that brings us to the IMDb rating, which is currently 7.6 out of 10, based on over 96,000 IMDb users. With 34.7 giving it a 10 out of 10, 19.1 an 8, 15.3 is 9, but 7.2 a 1. Oh, and 10.1 and a 7. So, yeah, a chunk of people did not like it, but yeah, currently most people did. And the, yeah. 
overall, I... Oh, all right. The, the... Yeah, I recommend this show to fans of comic book adaptations who want something unlike the usual MCU. Honestly, unlike any... I, I haven't seen anything that's that similar to this. You know, it is legitimately different. It has the MCU style, but it's a different concept, and I really appreciate it. And, yeah, if if you don't already have Disney+, Plus, you know, I do recommend it to fans of the MCU. Now, I record this roughly 26 hours after the finale premiered, and currently there are no extras. There's, like, a trailer that you can find on YouTube, here on YouTube as well. But if you're a fan of the MCU, you know, I, I could imagine in the future they will, certainly for some of these shows they put out, like, one hour plus documentaries that are, I don't think you can get anywhere other than Disney Plus. So, you know, it's probably worth it. And yeah, you're a fan of the MCU. Most of the movies have good stuff. Some have a lot. And it's stuff that, as far as I can tell, isn't on like home releases, you know. So yeah, I give this 10 interesting concepts executed well out of 10. And. Yeah, so, the updated ranking. Once again, I love all the MCU shows, but worst to best, Loki, What If, Hawkeye, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, and WandaVision. Yes, that's right. It, it's, you know, if you've watched my WandaVision videos, you know how much I love WandaVision. This is only say, yeah, this is, this is close to, yeah. But yeah, please comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite MCU show, and if you think there was something they could have done better about this show, where you hope the characters in it show up next. If you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two, or more links to stuff like relevant playlists. I suggest a video, video for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week, reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on the movie, and recently the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one, although, you know, there's no thought section to this one because I'm recording it separately. But yeah, in other, in other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I'll catch you next time.